Okay. So good morning, everyone, and uh, I want to salute each one of you that uh, are now listening to, to us and watching this conversation. I have the pleasure to have here with me Dr. Basim Nayem, who uh, is currently one high-ranking and one of the, the top political um, representatives of the Hamas group. Uh, first, let me thank you once again for joining us and for accepting our Please. invitation. Uh, and now, uh, starting with the, the, the questions that we have here, and I think it's pretty positive to know, I would like to start with the following question. Palestine is internationally recognized by more than 75% of the United Nations member states. How long it will take to have Palestine as the 194th United Nations member state? Thank you very much and uh, honored to have this uh, conversation, this interview with you and with and to contact through you, your uh, honored and distinguished uh, audience. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this has this question has not to be raised after 75 years of occupation of Palestine. Uh, when uh, the UN uh, accepted Israel as a, as a member, as a full member state of the United Nations, 1949, there was a, a, a second paragraph of the same resolution, which is talking about accepting Israel as a, as a member state and founding the Palestinian, the independent Palestinian state on, on the rest of Palestine. Therefore, the acceptance of a Palestinian state, an independent sovereign state, as a member state or as a full member state of the United Nations, has to be uh, uh, has to be the the, the 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 fact which is which no one, including Israel or the United States or any country, has the right to be to this or to oppose this or to block this. Therefore, I think. It is the, the, the responsibility of the international community today is to accept Palestine as a full member state uh, of the United Nations immediately, with unconditionally, and don't accept the Israeli propaganda and the American arguments to delay this acceptance, because this is a genuine right of the Palestinians to have an independent state, a self-sovereign state. Mm -hmm. All right. And for example, when I realized that countries like Portugal, they resist on legally recognized Palestine as an independent and sovereign state, using the argument that such recognition basically will not help to put an end to the conflict. What does this even make sense to you? Uh, what could be the alternative for people who and for countries who use such arguments? I think this is this does not make any sense because these arguments we are hearing since 75 years again no country no uh, foundation no uh, institutions have the right to veto the existence and the recognition of a palestinian state because this is the genuine right of uh, a state second look for example when we go to the court for any conflict, to solve any conflict. Before going to the conflict, uh, all parties, including the enemies and the court and the lawyers, have to recognize the, uh, the, the, the two parties who are involved in this conflict. You cannot recognize one party and keeping the other party uh, not recognized or well-defined. I think, on the contrary, recognizing the state of Palestine will put Israel as an occupying power to, uh, to accept this fact on the ground that this is a Palestinian state and they are behaving against the international law by continuing occupying this, these territories, by expelling uh, and persecuting the people on this ground. Therefore, when you, when you recognize the Palestinian state, it, it means a lot legally when it comes to the international law and the law of uh, and uh, international humanitarian law, because automatically it means that Israel is behaving against international law when when they continue to occupy this country, and it will affect the bilateral relationship between Portugal and Israel. 
that Israel is not respecting the, Portuguese, uh, the, the law in Portugal by attacking a country recognized by Portugal as an independent state. Also, it, it will affect the, the relationship between, between Israel and Europe, uh, EU, for example, because they are continuing to attack uh, a, a, a full member state of the United Nations. Therefore, I think it is in the contrary. This will exercise a lot of pressure on Israel to stop these uh, atrocities, to stop their uh, violations of international law. For example, look, when it comes to Jerusalem, Al-Quds, uh, at least east part of Jerusalem, is recognized in the international law as an occupied territory. When uh, Portugal, for example, or EU country recognize Palestine as a state and East Jerusalem as the capital of this state, it will mean a lot for, uh, for Palestine and also for Israel when it comes to this conflict, because it means that Israel, when they are expelling forcefully or peacefully Palestinians from East Jerusalem, it is a great violation of international law. When they are trying to change the status quo in Al-Aqsa Mosque, it means, because this is international law, the status quo, and this has no right to change it. When, when, when it is recognized as part of international law, I think this will, be, uh, this will mean a lot uh, as a pressure on Israel mm -hmm. to go for a solution for the conflict. Right. Uh, and many times we hear about the legitimacy of the Balfour Declaration. Uh, what does the Balfour Declaration mean to Palestine currently? Balfour Declaration has no legitimacy at all, neither historically nor, uh, nor, uh, nor legally or politically. Uh, at that time, 1917, uh, UK or Britain was occupying Palestine and they are a foreign country, they are a foreign occupation and they have given another nation the right to build their own country in a land they, are, they, are, they have no right in it. I mean what we say in Arabic usually someone have gives something he is not owning to another one who has no rights. I mean, this is the country of Palestine, and this was recognized by, by the way, when we go back to 19, uh, 1922, when UK was authorized to have its mandate on Palestine, it was clear in the mandate that UK has the international authorization to be the mandate country on Palestine, on the state of Palestine, I'm talking about the whole Palestine from the river to the sea, to prepare the country and the people of this country for their independence after 20 or 30 years. Therefore, it was fully recognized, I mean, this area between the river and the sea, it was fully recognized as a, an independent country, as a country, and second, it was recognized that this is the country of Palestinians. Therefore, when even the division, uh, the division resolution, uh, uh, 1947, the UN has divided something which is, which the UN has no right in it. It has divided something which is owned by the Palestinians in two parts. I mean, neither legally nor historically or, uh, or politically have the UK the right to promise someone who has no right with the, with, 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 the, with the property of other people. Therefore, I think this was the beginning of all the atrocities has been performed against our people. And this, by the way, Balfour, Balfour Declaration is a clear signal that the occupation of Palestine in 1949 has nothing to do with the Holocaust, has nothing to do with the persecution of Jews in, 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 in Europe. It was taken 30 years before the Holocaust, or 20 years before the Holocaust. Therefore, it means that it was planned 
before all these atrocities and the Holocaust and seeking a, a land uh, to secure the Jewish uh, community from, from, the, uh, from being persecuted by Europeans. Mm -hmm. And we, will, we often hear the argument of Israel's right, his historical right to the land it occupies several times. And this recalls, in a way, the idea defended by, for example, the Islamic State, which invokes a historical right to the reinstatement of a caliphate in lands that were in the past occupied by the Moors. For example, part of Portugal is an example of this with the famous Al-Andalus region. How do you look at this argument of historical right from Israel? Look, first of all, uh, if there was a Jewish state 3,000 years ago in Palestine, and they are themselves, they're talking about their own state twice in history, the, the first and the second time was around 70 years, not longer than that. Mm -hmm. The question is, who were before the foundation or the establishment of this Jewish state in Palestine? They were the Palestinians, the Canaanite. And who were after that? Second, it was not only along the history, there was only, not only uh, the Jewish state or the, uh, the state of Israel, 3,000 years in Palestine. The, in, in Palestine, we have had the Jewish state for 70 years. We have the Romanians, we have the uh, Islamic uh, state, we have the Pharaoh, we have, we have a lot of uh, nations who, who were in Palestine for several times. Second, if we go back 2,000 or 3,000 years ago to reshape the whole world based on the history, it means that the United States has no right to exist today. It means that a lot of countries has no right to exist today. It means that, as you said, that uh, Muslims have the right today to go back to, uh, to, to Spain or to Portugal. It, ha it means that German has to go back to some Russian land, uh, and Russia has to go back to Ukraine. The, they have the right to go back to Ukraine. And it means that this means exactly, this is the, the definition of, of hysterical chaos, that today we want to reshape the, 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 the history based on uh, the, the, the world, based on uh, history of 3,000 years ago which was not, again, uh, the, uh, uh, the only sh uh, form we have had. Again, in Palestine, we have a lot of nations uh, al uh, along the history. Mm -hmm. And basically, how do we digest the positions of Western leaders like Ursula von der Leyen or even from the White House, who speak of Israel's unconditional right to self-defense, to defend itself? even if in practice this alleged self-defense murders civilians? First of all, unfortunately, uh, this lady is, the, is a war criminal, and she is complicit with the Israelis in killing our people because of this continuous political, uh, diplomatic, financial, and military support for, uh, for all these atrocities committed against our people. Second, I have to say, according to international law, the occupying power has no right to self-defense if they are attacked by the people under occupation. This is a rule in international, in international law. Therefore, Israel has no right to self-defense, neither conditioned or, or unconditioned. They have no right, especially when it comes from people who are under the Israeli occupation. I mean, these are people who are for 75 years under occupation, who are uh, uh, in Gaza in particular for 17 years under a suffocating siege, who are who their, who their land was, was taken, the uh, land in the West Bank was annexed, and now we hear the leaking news from Bezalel Smotrich, who is talking about annexation 
of the rest of the West Bank under the Israeli uh, law. I mean, Israel has no right to defend itself when it comes to the resistance of people under occupation who are seeking only their dignity, their freedom, their right to live like all other people around the world. Right. And so also we hear insistently the Western media labeling Hamas as a terrorist group. What should people basically in the European Union know about Hamas in order to understand what the group really is instead of keep following the labeling put by Western media? I can hear talk in three points. First of all, Palestinians have fought or struggled or, or resisted all kind of occupation and oppression and, uh, and aggression, not for five years or 10 years. It is now for 100 years. This is exactly after the uh, announcement of the Balfour Declaration, which means that it has nothing to do with Hamas. It is about Palestinians who are seeking their freedom and dignity. Today, it is Hamas who is leading the resistance 20 years ago, it was Fatah. 30, 50 years ago, it was the PFLP, uh, and so on and so on. Therefore, it is not about Hamas. It is about Palestinians who are seeking their dignity and freedom. Second, Palestinians, 1993, have signed Oslo Agreement in an, in an attempt to reach a solution for this conflict peacefully. Who has destroyed all these chances of reaching a peaceful political solution for the conflict, it was exactly the Israeli governments, in particular, especially Benjamin Netanyahu, 1996, when he became the prime minister, he said it publicly and loudly, I will destroy that so-called two-state solution. And he is saying this exactly today. Yesterday he said this. In a press statement, I will, I will not accept the so-called two-state solution. And he was in the UN in September last year, and he was talking, and he had the map of Palestine, and he said here between the river and the sea, there is no chance for any other state except Israel. I mean, Palestinians have given all the chance for a political peaceful solution. It was destroyed by Israel, and unfortunately, European Union and the Americans and all Western countries have they, uh, they didn't take any serious action to stop these Israeli plans. We have heard some empty words or, or nice words that these Israeli actions by annexing the land, by changing the situation in Al-Aqsa Mosque, by settlements, it harms the peace process. It will not serve the peace process. But practically, they do nothing on the ground to stop all these policies. But lastly, when it comes to Hamas, Hamas is a democratically elected movement by the Palestinian people 2006 with a vast majority. And all the polls, including the last one of last week done by Dr. Khalil Shikaki, it is a, a, a research center based in Ramallah, supported or financed by European Union itself, showed that Hamas is still representing the vast majority and enjoying the support of vast majority of Palestinians. Why? Because Hamas is clearly talking about what we are calling for is to get rid of this occupation, is to achieve our genuine right of dignity, freedom, self-determination, right of return. This, this is international law. And therefore, we are fighting for our rights. We are not attacking anyone who are who is ready to uh, live with us or coexist with us peacefully. Second, I have to say, I, therefore, Hamas is a Palestinian national liberation movement. Why we resorted to armed resistance? Because we have seen 75 years, all political uh, 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 proposal to solve this conflict has failed. And Israel has destroyed any chance to reach a, a political solution. And here I have to say, our fight, our struggle is not against Jews or Judaism. On the contrary, we have a lot of friends everywhere in the world, in America, in Europe, in Latin America, who are Jews and friends of us, friends of Palestine, friends supporting our cause. 
It is about the occupation. It is about the Israeli occupation. It's about the Israeli siege on Gaza. We are fighting the Zionist project, which is attacking our people, killing our people, planning to expel our people from, from their land. It has nothing to do with the, with the religion. On the contrary, look, when, when, when someone come with a tank to attack our people in Gaza, for example, we are not asking him about his religion or ethnicity or color or, or sex. It is about someone who is driving a tank to attack our people. Therefore, we are not fighting against Jews or Judaism. Mm -hmm. In the contrary, before the establishment of the state of Israel, we have lived Palestinians, Muslims, Christians, and Jews peacefully together. And you can ask a lot of Jews who are still alive, who were at that time, they, are, they can tell you how peacefully we were living together in one Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, cons considering your last, uh, this last answer and this last point, now Russia has been criticized by the West for its policy towards Palestine, especially since 2007 when Hamas won the elections, or 2006 when Hamas won the elections, and Russia agreed to talk to all Palestinian actors, including Hamas. What do you think of this? Do you think there's a difference between these two positions, one held by Russia, the other by the West? I think Russia is a big country, and Russia is aware about international law, aware about uh, its own interests. Look, first of all, what is the definition of terrorism? Can any European country give us a, a universal acceptable definition of terrorism to say, okay, how can I describe killing of one million Iraqi by the Americans? How can I describe killing of thousands and thousands of Afghanis? How I can I killing, how can I describe the killing and destroying Somalia? Unfortunately, the Europeans are selectively, based on their own interests, they are defining this group terrorists, and this is legitimate uh, struggle. For example, a few weeks before October 7th, we were observing how European countries were encouraging and applauding the armed resistance in Ukraine, how they were uh, proud of how women and minors in Ukraine trained how to use weapons to resist the so-called uh, Russian invasion. Why in this case armed resistance is legitimate and encouraged and supported and financed, including women, and here it is terrorism. Again, it is, this is exactly the definition of European hypocrisy, that they are selectively considering this group as terrorism and the other group as freedom fighters. Look, how can I describe the resistance of General de Gaulle in, in, in France during the, the Second World War against the Nazis in France, against Fiji government in France. Again, we, what we are looking for, please give us a universal declaration of what is the meaning of terrorism. Look, not only Russia, why is the UN is not considering Hamas as a terrorist group? Why? Because the UN is aware about the international law that all people under occupation have the right to resist this occupation by all means, including armed resistance. And the UN is aware that in the international law that the occupying power like Israel have no right to annex the land, no right to persecute or to besiege the people, Israel has no right to defend itself when the people under occupation uh, resisting this occupation. This is the international law. And I think Europe, either they are respecting international law as a reference for our relationship on this globe, or they are choosing the law of jungle that Anyone can do what he wants as long as he has the power to do it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And 
what do you consider? Does Israel currently have the right to exist? How do we distinguish between Israeli and Palestinian self-determination? Look, first of all, uh, as I told you at the beginning, uh, Balfour Declaration and the uh, mandate authorization of UK to be the mandate power on Palestine. At that time, Palestine from the river to the sea was recognized as the state of Palestine. And if you can go to history, from 1922 up to 1948, all the documents, passports, birth certificates, all the documents was, uh, was uh, issued by the state of Palestine. Even all of those Jews, including uh, Shimon Beres, Tzak Rabin, Golda Meir, and other leaders, and Shamir, they have a Palestinian passport to enter Palestine. They have a Palestinian uh, driving license to be to have the right to drive the car in Palestine. All of them, they have a, a Palestinian paper. Therefore, this was a Palestine. And the UN, who is not owner of this land, has no right to divide it. You cannot divide my, uh, my money between two people. This is my money. This is not your money. Therefore, the UN has no right to divide it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have said, okay, go back to the situation before the division plan, and Palestinians who are living there have to decide about the future of this land, how to coexist together, how to live together. And uh, I think in Palestine, we have all, we are mature enough to decide how to run our country all together, Palestinians, I mean Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Look, uh, today, including Hamas, have, we have said, okay, we will accept a state on 67 borders with Palestine, with, the, with Jerusalem, Al-Quds as a capital, preserving the right of Palestinians who were displaced from their homes and villages in 1948 because this is international law, they have this right to return back. But to recognize the other state or not, this is the decision of Palestinians when they have their state. You cannot ask individuals or, or organizations under oppression, under occupation, about their future relationship to any country, not only to Israel, to Israel, to America, to Portugal, to any country. This is the decision of the state. This is the decision of the Palestinians when they have their own state. Look, I cannot today ask every citizen in Portugal, what, what's your opinion about China? What's your opinion about Russia? What's your opinion about North Korea? Do you recognize North Korea? I, I think this is not practiced anywhere. Exactly. To re look, when, when, when did China or India even, who, are, who is now a friend of Israel, have an official relationship to Israel or recognized Israel re uh, official. It was 1992. I mean, 40, 50 years after the foundation of the state of Israel. Therefore, why Palestinians who are the victim of this oppression for 75 years have now to uh, give uh, guarantees for, the, for their own enemy who is still oppressing them? Second, I have to say something. Maybe not a lot of Europeans hearing this uh, always. Who should ask for guarantees? We, the Palestinians who are oppressed, or the oppressor? Who, uh, who should look or ask for guarantees? Those who are massacred and persecuted and killed by all kinds of weapons, or the other party who has nuclear weapons, who has biological weapons, who has chemical weapons, who has F-35, who has all the facilities and capabilities. Look, when in 19, uh, 2002, when Sharon uh, was not accepting the vision of Yasser Arafat, who was signing the peace agreement with Israel, when, he, when Sharon didn't accept the vision of Yasser Arafat, how to proceed forward, in two days, Sharon 
has reoccupied uh, the West Bank. I mean, they, we have to be afraid of the future. We have to ask for guarantees for, the, for our future because they have all the capability to reoccupy Gaza Strip and the West Bank again. They have all the support. Look, today, the whole media in America is talking about only one point, how to relaunch shipping of weapons to Israel again, how to support Israel with more weapons. I mean, Israel has all the sources to get more support, and therefore it is our question to the whole world. We are asking for guarantees that our future state will be protected and Israel will not be uh, will not attack it again. Mm-hmm. And also uh, concerning all the situation and going to a recent event, can you take stock of what has been committed by Israel since October 7, 2023? And for those also who are unaware of the atrocities committed by Israel in Palestine since the beginning of the 20th century, can you briefly summarize a little of what the Palestinian people are going through? Because it seems really hard for many, especially in the European Union, to understand what actually is going on and what the, the Palestinian people have been through all this time. Thank you very much. This is a very important question. Uh, I have to say that after October 7th operation, uh, and maybe we have a chance after this question to talk a little bit why we have reached October 7th. Why did it happen? Since that time, Israel have decided to implement all those plans were hidden uh, agendas. The changing of the situation in the in Al-Aqsa Mosque, finally, the annexation of the West Bank, the evacuation of Gaza Strip of its people. Therefore, they have declared three goals the crushing of the resistance in Gaza, the evacuation or forceful evacuation of Gazans from their uh, land towards Sinai, towards Egypt, and the retrieving of the uh, captured Israelis. Since that time, Israel has destroyed more than 80% of all Palestinian housing and buildings. All schools, universities, most of the hospitals, even UN buildings, ICRC buildings, uh, municipality buildings, mosques, churches, infrastructures, water wells, all things. Again, the plan was how to convert Gaza Strip as an unlivable place. How to make it, if the Palestinians don't want to leave Gaza forcefully, okay, we will convert this area as an unlivable place. When they return back to their houses, they will not find water, they will not find a mosque, a church, uh, a school, a university, a clinic, nothing. Uh, And this is the fact today that 2.3 million Palestinians are displaced from their uh, houses and uh, homes. But when it comes to the people, at least 45,000 Palestinians were massacred and killed during this aggression. 65 to 70% of them are women and children and minors and elderly. And maybe this is the first time in history that women and children are more than men to be killed in in, in wars. Uh, More than 80,000 or 85,000 Palestinians wounded, 10,000 of them are seriously wounded and they have no hospitals or no clinics to be treated. Today, even international aid agencies have no chance to help the Palestinians. Either because the borders are closed, they cannot come in, they cannot bring any serious aid into Gaza, or they are attacked. And we have, maybe everyone have heard about attacking the UN facilities, the UN headquarters, killing of around 200 UN UNRWA employees, ICRC was attacked, World Kitchen was, uh, employees were attacked and killed. This is the reality on the ground today. 
But also today, because of uh, blocking all the borders and allowing a little uh, of aid to come into Gaza, today we can seriously talking about famine and starvation, in the, especially in the northern part of Gaza Strip. Today we, we, we can see a lot of videos and photos of children suffering of malnutrition and dying because of uh, absence of food and medicine. They are using food and medicine and water uh, as a tool of war to, uh, or to pressure the Palestinians to subjugate to their uh, goals. Today, thousands of Palestinians cannot leave for treatment abroad or cannot leave, cannot leave Gaza Strip to join family, their families abroad. We are talking about a total catastrophe when it, when it comes to the humanitarian uh, situation. And I think when the ICG, the International Criminal Ju uh, Just, uh, Justice, Court of Justice, when they talk about serious signs of genocide, I think we are talking about 15 judges from different countries who are aware about what does it mean, genocide. I think it is not a, a word said in, in, in the media, in the news, or it is said in the highest international court of the world that Israel is committing genocide in the Gaza Strip. And you can imagine what does it mean committing genocide of killing, of, uh, of wounding people, of destroyment, and so on. Therefore, the situation on the ground is very, very catastrophic. No place in, in Gaza Strip is secure. No place. You cannot be sure where to go. All the shelters in schools, in hospitals, in UN facilities, uh, by the, near the ICRC, Two days ago, they have attacked the front door of the ICRC building and killed around 20 Palestinians and wounded dozens, maybe 50. No place, no facility is, is secure. I am contacting all the people there. My family and my children are still there. They don't know where to go because there is no safe place. Therefore, I think it is... Uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, for nine months now, Palestinians are exposed to all these horrific atrocities, brutal atrocities, to this genocide, to this famine. But unfortunately, the international community, especially Europe, America, Western powers, are not doing enough to oblige Israel to respect the international law and to fulfill its obligation as an occupying power and to get and to, to, uh, to withdraw, to stop this aggression immediately and to uh, withdraw their forces from the Gaza Strip and to allow all the aid to come in into Gaza. Dr. Basim Naim, thank you very much for being with us. Please. Planning with so many details in order to allow us to understand actually everything. Thank you, properly. please. Have a, thank great, you very much. have a great day and I wish all the best for the future and also for the policy. Inshallah.